and welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 6 Expert, where today, let's try out the vacuum trap. So I think we're, I think we're ready to go. So we've got this thing loaded up with memory essence, and this is going to give it a higher chance of doing stuff. I, I swear it's in the information. Yeah, if the trap's fluid tank contains at least 100 ml buckets of memory essence, a random but significant bonus will be applied when entities are absorbed. Now, I don't know what they mean by a bonus. Like a bonus to how... Like this is Shulker 100% and I think maybe as it spawns Shulkers it gets... It goes down and it'll be like 99%, 98% until you potentially get down to an empty one. Oh, a vacuum trap can be used to build cores with multiple essences. Oh! I didn't realize that was a thing. So by the sound of this, we could have a spawner that would spawn multiple types of mobs. That's actually pretty cool. That's actually pretty cool. Well, let's start with, we want a tarantula hawk. Uh, once we get that, we're going to be able to get a whole bunch of tarantula hawk wings. And that was going to be used here for making air regions. We might want to find a Wilden and add him to the mob spawner thing as well. That could be kind of neat. That could be kind of neat. I don't know how many of these we're going to need. And I don't remember where we left the trench, the hawks. They're somewhere around here. Over here. Sweet. <laughs> I knew it was somewhere. Yeah, we can hear them. We can hear them. All right. I think this guy's tamed. So if we were to chuck him here, and we get you to stay right in front of, right in front of there, right in front of there, and then somehow we turn this on. Right click with an empty hand or apply a redstone signal to toggle it open and closed. Okay, so shift right click. Does it need to be... Oh, do they have to go on top of it? Okay, what if we... Oh, he doesn't absorb tamed animals. Oh. Alright, so, open. That worked. A tarantula hook, 4%. Why? Alright. So that's mostly empty. Why did it do that? Place in a pressure spawner. Now, I'm a little bit concerned that it's only 4% full. But alright, let's go pressure spawner. Tarantula hook. Maybe this just needs pressure now. Now we could set this up down by our mob crusher. Ow. Uh, like over here. And then we'd constantly get tarantula wings. But to be honest, I don't know how many vector plates we're going to need. And... Oh, there's tarantula hawks everywhere. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Give me the wings. Give me the wings. Stop flying around. Okay, so that took about five seconds <laughs> to get a stack and a bit of tarantula hawk wings. So that's pretty cool. And then I've just got a chest here for, for other mob stuff. This isn't a great place to put this, but it did work. So that's kind of all we need. So, uh, vector plates. I think the last thing I needed was Weldon wings, which may or may not be a thing we have a bunch of. Uh, we got 13. I mean, this could be enough. And then clouds in a bottle. Clouds in a bottle, I think. Oh. Well, I mean, that's just glass bottles. That won't be too bad. Easy. And we're just going to need a couple of... What the? A couple of Wilden Stalkers. Well, really, probably only one actually because I'm gonna uh, create a spawner from them and then nice all right 
got a whole bunch of these air regions. Uh, this should be enough to get, hopefully this is enough for everything. I've actually still got a couple more. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to uh, replace some of these with the higher tier ones, at least right around the edge of the thing, because it seems quite common that mobs kind of get stuck. Now we might... <laughs> We might double check that that's still true. Um, I can <laughs> squeeze out of there. Uh, just in case I'm wrong. So, do mobs hover around the edge? So they do kind of hover around the edge sometimes. All right, so we got ourselves just a couple of the faster the faster vector plates, and I think that actually kind of works pretty well. Uh, just because it really seemed like the mobs kind of get stuck on the edge, so you really only need these ones. Um, I'm running into a problem where mobs keep spawning outside <laughs> the thing. I think just because I got the spawners right up against the wall, so at night time they tend to spawn outside and fall down, so hence the, the glass box, and we might have to do something about that. So I was trying to craft a whole bunch of dry rubber because that's one of the main components we are missing for getting these chemical infusers, uh, which is the whole reason we're, we're doing this is we're trying to craft three chemical infusers and it's, it's quite difficult to get the resources for that. Um, so I've been working on, and let's get rid of these, uh, speed add-ons for latex. Um, so I think, I think, I think. We're at a point where we've got a whole bunch of latex now because I chucked speed add-ons and power into these. Uh, I'll probably end up making another one, but we should speed up this thing because we're very, very short on dry rubber. Uh, if we were to try and craft a couple of these infusers, and we need, we need three. I mean, we could make one for now, but... We really need three. So we're missing 562. That's quite a bit. That's quite a bit. And I don't know if there's another way to get dry rubber. So we can do 900 millibuckets. Makes a big one. Hang on, this might be, this might be the way to go actually. Because tiny dry rubber uh, that's what we're making at the moment. And I'm not sure how much latex we use each time. I don't know. It doesn't really say. But this might be a really inefficient way of doing things. Alright, let's try replacing uh, this thing. So we're going to get rid of you. Uh, I guess we still want the importer. I don't know if we really want this for anything else. Probably not. Chuck in a fluid encapsulator. If you take fluid in from the bottom. You're going to need... So there we go. You need sulfur. Right, so we're going to want an exporter. Probably not an external storage, an exporter. Um, let's just get a bunch of sulfur for now. We can see how fast this thing is. So. Slow. Very, <laughs> very slow. Uh, and then if we were to check some of these upgrades. A little bit faster. A little bit faster. And then if we check this in. That's pretty good. That, I think, is going to cause us to not have enough latex. Or, you know, completely efficiently use <laughs> all of the latex we have available. And that looks, that looks a bit better. But can we get an infuser? We can once I fix that recipe. All right. We'll leave this processing 
and I'll uh, see if we can get at least one chemical infuser. <laughs> Start making some progress because we could continue uh, working along these mechanism quest lines. Like once we get this chemical infuser, that's when, you know, we're going to be processing that next part of the fuel, which was sulfur trioxide. So yeah, I'm going to fix that recipe and figure out, figure out that. All right, so a whole bunch of crafting later. Uh, I ended up setting up these multi-servo presses. So these are all just for processing uh, all the different plates because uh, kind of had two of them and they would kind of get stuck. And yeah, if you've been following the uh, All of Fabric uh, Let's Play series, uh, this is kind of, kind of a similar approach where we have all of the plate crafting because it's only one input equals one output. Uh, we can just buff that all into a chest and then I kind of extract out of multiple sides because it's a bit faster uh, into all of these these presses. Now I don't know how well this actually works. I think we're kind of limited by how fast these things input. I ended up putting some speed upgrades in here. I might want to put a stack upgrade. Like if we craft something, uh, what's something that's just easy to make? Like a copper plate. Let's craft one, two, three, four, five stacks. Go. Like he's, he is inputting, but it's not going into all of the machines. I think we want like a stack upgrade from refined storage actually. That would probably help. Uh, so we need, we need some speed upgrades. Let's get another one of them going. I also set up a little bit of auto crafting uh, for lubricant buckets. So we have this thermonomatic processing plant. Um, eventually this is going to run out of heat because it's, yeah, it's, it's that approach to stuff, which we know isn't great. It isn't great, but I'm just a little bit short on power. So I went with that route. Um, we got an external fluid storage. And then because I was removing those multi servo presses, we now have a fluid encapsulator. And you know, that just takes buckets and yeah, makes fluid buckets, which is quite easy, quite simple. Probably should have done that a while ago. Now, did I request speed upgrades? I did. And to make these into a stack upgrade. Now, do we know how to make these? Because it seems like the kind of thing... Where we could do this. Uh, so that was just a metallurgic infuser and the one with redstone in it. Oh, I just accidentally put the speed upgrades in there. That's not really what we want. Um, and for now, we'll just manually do it. But in the future, we'll be able to craft like that. And I missed the stack upgrade. So... If we instead do st st stack up... Oh, you can't do a stack upgrade. Okay. Well, I've also got this down here. Now, can we do stack upgrades here? Yeah, we can. Okay, that might be better. So we'll extract a stack at a time. We'll have maximum speed upgrades into this chest. It's kind of still the bottleneck. Um, let's get another five stacks. Go. I mean, that's pretty good. Again, we're still not utilizing... Oh, we're kind of just utilizing these... It's not too bad. I'm missing the augments. Whoops. Missing the flux linkages. But I did craft them. Just to speed these up a bit. Neat. Neat, neat. Now, maybe not the smartest thing to do uh, when we're low on power, but it's going to make crafting faster. We're still struggling on this crafting. This crafting is still really slow. We kind of want these energizing rods everywhere. And you can see we, we're not like back stuffing on power in the Elite Universal Cable. Uh, we're kind of using everything that we make. And I'm, I'm still not sure where all that power is going. <laughs> but it's going somewhere. But we should have one chemical infuser. Uh, probably still short on resources for making the next one, but... Let's tick that off the list. Wait, why? What are your dependencies? Oxygen. Wait, what? Uh, oxygen. 
Oh, we need to... Right, we've done water, we've done electrolytic separators, we've made hydrogen, made oxygen, we've made our first chemical infusion, there we go, cool. And then we want sulfur trioxide. Um, rotary concentrator we do have, but we haven't started making water vapor. Guess that's the next one. So the next thing we want is this sulfur trioxide. I shouldn't have gotten rid of that electrolytic separator. So sulfur trioxide. Oxygen and sulfur dioxide. And that should be pretty simple. Let's craft this thing. Oh, and I've been uh, playing around with this gas burning generator. He is producing 2000 RF attack or EFE attack and then this guy's using that. <laughs> yeah, we need to... Need some better power generation. But we've got sulfur dioxide in this tank. Now can we do this? Can we go gases input? Now Now what side's the front? I think this is the front. So it'll be left side. Uh Oh, we're on gases, eject on, output. Sulfur dioxide, nice. That worked pretty well. And then we need oxygen, and I'm hoping to pipe this in the front. A bit of a mess. Can we do this? Now, see, the inputs aren't quite set up for that. We might be able to modify them, though. Uh, so, input. Input on the front. Uh, but not input one put two on the front item config oh gas sorry and put two there we go and then we're getting sulfur trioxide and we want to uh, so we're on items we're on gases output blue which is this one this is blue cool sulfur trioxide nice not too bad, not too bad, we'll patch up the floor. That doesn't look great, <laughs> that does not look great, we'll look at <laughs> fixing that in the future. I swear, I swear, I don't know, I don't know, we'll see how we go. So we got sulfur trioxide. Neat. Uh, what are we working towards next? So we've got sulfur trioxide, cool. Then we need the chemical infuser, right. And it does something with sulfur trioxide. Sulfur trioxide and water vapor make sulfuric acid. So we need another chemical infuser. I don't think I can craft one. Oh, actually, we're not far off. How many dry rubber do we have? 235. It's progressing. That's not bad. Okay, so it's just annoyingly... There's actually a couple of annoying crafts with this. I need to sort it. I need to sort it. Um, it's crafting these blazing agitators. So I can craft... I can't craft these. I have blazing rods, but the recipe for this... And I've tried replacing them. It doesn't work. So we kind of have to craft eight energizing rods. I need to do something with this. Um... Energizing rods, and we've actually got a couple. So we'll say we need six energizing rods. Let's take these out so we can see the auto craft. Let's get six. And this crafting's fine, except for the etching acid. This craft jams up. So we'll start it. We'll drain, <laughs> drain the power out of these. Oh, you can't do multiple? Oh, it was empty. I still don't stack. Uh, but this craft up here gets jammed because it starts putting in buckets which causes this thing to become filled with buckets and not take up not take in any more items because you know buckets don't stack so it fills up all of the slots inside the machine yeah maybe a larger pressure chamber might solve that problem. We probably actually just want to be smarter with the crafting. Um, maybe using something like Xnet would kind of work for that end. Yeah, there's some of this crafting happening down there too. But neat, I think <laughs> I'll babysit this. Now, so it's starting to put buckets in. Um, we don't want 
This is what I did last time. If we get all the buckets in first, it fills up the machine. For some reason it decides to keep putting buckets in. So I kind of have to stop that from happening. Yeah, you can see it's getting close to, <laughs> it's getting close to doing that. But all right, progress is happening in the factory. Uh, slowly but surely, things are starting to improve. We're admittedly slowly progressing through the rest of this pack, but uh, it's definitely going to be a long-term one. We're probably still going to be playing this next year. That's the plan for now. That's the plan. We'll take it slow, but I'd like to get to the end. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> but anyway, it's been Classic Duff. Thanks for watching. We'll come back next time uh, for some more Enigmatica 6 Expert. See ya.